Okay? Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. The Alan Cox Show. It all is created in a place like this by putting bits and pieces of sound together and building them all up until what you hear seems real. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Yeah, 5K only takes about 30 minutes. And so when we're all done with that, we're going to start drinking. So the schedule is at um, alancockshow.com, the contest tab there. We'll hit Ivy, we'll hit Dive Bar, we'll hit Velvet Dog, we'll hit Barley House. The ru- uh, race is at 5, and then we'll be uh, running around down there uh, that night. So if you want to, uh, if you don't want to run and just kind of want to come hang, uh, that's, uh, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, Adam Carolla on the phone here in a minute. He is doing one night at Hilarities. Thursday night, he's going to do two shows. Um, I, I need him to clarify it for me because I think he, I don't think he prepares for the show. So I haven't talked to him in a bit. For the comedy show? Or yeah, for... it's some, he's doing something where like he crowdsources the material or I'll have him clarify when I talk to him. But, mm. uh, but it is Thursday night. He's doing a six o'clock show, six o'clock show uh, and an 830 show. <clears throat> hey. New order, Blue Monday, no more. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a what? that's one. I think I asked you to take that one out, but really, it's blocked. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, let me take it out. Yep. I know you love that one. I love that one too. Well, but... It gets played once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and then our friend Jim Twos uh, is back in town. He's doing Wednesday and Friday at Hilarities. He's doing. An, he's got a new album out or coming out. Releasing or album release. Friday show. release. Um, he's a, so. he's also popping over to Final Fridays uh, at All Saints Public House to do a little guest spot. All right, he's doing that. So he'll be in here on Wednesday. Dr. Ryan Berglund is back on Friday. We haven't seen him in a couple of months. The last uh, appearance on this show is our 10th anniversary special right before the holidays. So Dr. Berglund will be back on Friday doing what he does best, which is diagnosing penises. We do what a, seg- a week. We do a segment called "Is It Red?" And so, guys, I put this little. Bug in your ear now. If you've got questions for him, you can always email them to me ahead of time. Otherwise, we'll take your calls and your texts and the whole thing. So he's a urologist from the Cleveland Clinic. If you are a new customer to this show, uh, you might not know Dr. Ryan Berglund's pedigree, but he'll join us on Friday. Guys call in with all manner of issues uh, below the belt, and he tries to help in any way that he can. So we'll do that then. There is a girl in Illinois, Lockport, Illinois. This is a suburb of Chicago, most famously in some circles for being the hometown of one CM Punk. And there is a girl who is getting um, Christian radio signals in her wall, and they can't figure out why. You know, there used to be like old wives' tales about people picking up radio signals in their teeth. Yeah. Which technically, scientifically can happen, it's just that... The conditions for something like that have to be perfect, and mo- it doesn't happen as, if you'll pardon the pun, frequently. Well, if uh, anybody can think. make a perfect condition to receive the message of the Lord, it's radio. <laughs> I, I guess so. This family w- says there's a wall in their daughter's bedroom. It's been picking up radio signals for years, and nobody knows why. So, like, the wall plays music. Well, then my brain goes, like, well, she, the, it's music. probably faint signals. I'm not sure why just this one. Maybe there's, I don't know, maybe Some there's kind of silver in the wall. Yeah. yeah. There are voices in the wall. It's That's been creepy. waking me up at night. So you put your ear to the wall, and you can hear the music? We hear it audibly, and it's it kind of <gasps> keeps us up at night. Do you have a speaker in your wall? No, no speakers. <laughs> God, that would suck. There's no That's, volume, yeah. or, you know. It just comes through whenever. Yeah. Oh man. Why wouldn't you knock the wall down and rebuild the wall? Maybe they don't have money. So you hear that voice echoing through the wall. What do you think? I think Boy, I would think that you would be able to file some kind of insurance claim and go, look, I, I don't know what it is, but there's something in the wall that's picking up radio. <laughs> Sound like a like crazy person. Knock. Yes. So you hear that voice echoing through the wall. What do you think? I think this is about 1.30 in the morning that woke me up out of a sound sleep. Sometimes when we think we've arrived at a solution, the next season comes around and it's back. God, that would suck. It's static too? Or is that maybe just the recording? That might just be the recording. Like, is it like a constant static and then every now and then some kind of, 
You are holy. Yeah, they, I mean they've they've torn down uh, parts of her wall, I guess, and and but well, they she can't needs to tear down whatever issues she's having from keeping the Lord in her heart. So maybe she tears down the walls of her heart. Yeah. Huh. And then the you number, won't need to visit through the walls yeah. anymore. Something inside the wall was picking up a local AM radio station, and AM waves have much more reach. Yeah. You know, so it might not even be a local AM radio station. I mean, in northeastern Illinois, it could be something from Iowa. It could be from Michigan. Who knows? It'd be cutting right across the lake. Just cleaning up my apartment today. Moved the rosary. Cleaned underneath it. I don't need any any radio stations back. coming through my walls. Maybe that's what she did. She found a rosary, threw it away, and now she has to listen to Christian music for the rest <laughs> of her life. Well, they real they figured out what the station was, but they had a station engineer come out, but even they couldn't figure out what it was. The guy goes, I can't figure out what's going on here. I don't know what in the wall is acting as a speaker. So they've pulled this whole thing out, and nobody can figure out what's going on. But out of all the formats to get... AM Christian. Oh, my God. you got to mm-hmm. get, you know... Christian Radio, I'll tell you what, they're having a heyday. Yeah? There is another radio station. Um, you know, our, our old boss, Chris Tyler, left here to go run a radio station in Boston. He runs a classic rock station in Boston. Um... But there is another radio station that recently, it's as old as MMS, WAAF. It is licensed to Worcester, Mass., but it competed in the Boston market. And it was really one of the last, like, heavy, hard rock stations in just about any market. It's where Opie and Anthony blew up years yeah. ago, and they got popular in WAAF. And it had been on the air for 50 years. And they just got sold to this company that is buying all these other huge radio stations and putting this satellite Christian format on it. Hasn't happened here, but my old station in Chicago, The Loop, yep. they got sold to this educational media educational media foundation. Is this company that buys radio stations. And I mean, in all honesty, I mean, AAF was a legendary radio station, but it had like a one share. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like they weren't, they were smaller, past, yeah. past their heyday and yeah. whatever. Did they change the name to WWJD? I don't know. Call letters <laughs> pending. Call letters <laughs> pending. But they bought PLJ in New York. That's I mean, radio stations too, yeah. that were at one point just legendary call letters. Stations, granted, that were past their prime, but still, I don't know. You know, people go, where's this company getting all this money? I, I'm sure they operate as a nonprofit. I mean, if you ever listen to this, last time I was home, I clicked on my old station to see just what it sounded like. And it's just this format that they put on. It's not a local format. So the person who's on in the morning in Chicago is the person who's on in the morning in New York and Boston, whatever. It's just mm-hmm. a, it's a syndicated format. And it's Jesus music. And they're asking people for donations. So this is probably a company that operates as a nonprofit. Yeah. And so they're just, but I don't know why this company is buying all these radio stations. It's not like there's a shortage of Christian programming. Maybe Jesus is about to come back and they're trying to get the word out. You think that's what it is? Why else would you need all that all that airspace? You know? Can, can, couldn't Jesus just put himself in people's brains? Wouldn't you just wake up and you'd hear him in the walls? That's not how I Jesus mean, works. That's not how Jesus works. You have to him buys into heart. the industrial complex. Is that what it also is? Also that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wants it. So... The end of WAAF, and if we ha- I know we have a lot of Bureau Chiefs in the Boston area who I'm sure are familiar with the radio station, even if they weren't listeners, but the radio station had been on since 1970. So that means, because the longtime alternative stations in Boston were WBCN, WFNX, both are gone. There's no rock and roll radio in, the, the, in Boston, in that media market. I mean, well, Chris Tyler is at a classic rock station. But there's no, like, hard rock unless they're going to pick up some of these listeners, which they probably will. Hmm. The demise of WAAF is probably a boon to Chris Tyler's radio station. But, to you know, they told people who work there basically got a week's notice. They go, hey, uh, You're disjointed. this Christian company bought the radio station, and so they're going to flip it to whatever, you know, Jesus shows they got. It's pretty wild. That is. Pretty wild. You know what, though? Some of those Jesus bands sound like like Nickelback or like, you know, that type of music. 
where you can't really tell at first if they're doing it like that. I don't think they're playing Christian rock. They're playing like hymnals? The format, well, no, 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 but there's a lot of room in between Christian rock and hymnals. I mean, there's like Michael Stewart Montgomery or Amy Man, not Amy Man, Amy Grant. The the company is, or the format is called K-Love. So whatever station they buy, they throw this thing on called K-Love. And it's on in Chicago now. It's on in New York. I mean, it'd be different if they were like, oh, we bought a radio station Mm -hmm. in Omaha. Yeah. They're in major markets. So I don't know. People go, how does this company have all this money to buy these radio stations? Probably don't need it. Write it off. Yeah, probably don't need it. Like a church. They're like, oh, we don't pay taxes. That's how we can do all this. I spilled, uh, <laughs> I was cleaning my apartment today, and when I had my stack of W-2s on my coffee table, and I went to go move my coffee table to vacuum, and I, my, I had flowers in a vase, and it spilled over all over my W-2s. So I'm like, so now not only do I have to come in with a stack of receipts, like, from all my tolls and my this, I look like a train wreck, because now all my W-2s are, like, that crispy, dry, because they were wet feeling. Yeah, are you, you know hanging I mean? them on, like, a clothesline to dry them out? <laughs> Like put them on a towel because I was like walking out. Like I did that, and then it spilled, and I had to like run to try to get it going. And I had a conference call. It was a mess this morning. Why did you have paperwork near a vase? I didn't think that I would spill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's always when it spills. <laughs> well, I didn't even think of it. I just had it right on my coffee table so I could see it. So that it's like okay, grab those, go out the door, mm-hmm. make sure you don't forget them. And then... Yeah, and then I spilled water all over all of them. Hmm. Why didn't you take the vase off the coffee table before you moved it? Because I wasn't thinking that far ahead. Mm. I was like, I need to vacuum this spot, which means the coffee table needs to move. Hmm. That was as far as ahead <laughs> as I thought. I understand. You are the walking like version of the meme that is, uh, it's just someone on Twitter said, uh, well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions. <laughs> yeah, right, it really is. It's going to look like such, like a, like, I'm going to look like a self-employed idiot coming mm-hmm. in with like, oh, these papers were wet and now they're dry, but I don't know what they say. Like, yeah. You know? Some ink smeared. Just round down. It's fine. Allen Religious Radio does not pay taxes, just like the churches, and they have no local people, so they can run the whole empire with half a dozen people remotely. I know that's how they do it, but also the weird thing to me is I could see buying a radio station if you really had like a killer product and it was going to perform. But this company buys these stations in these markets. And it doesn't matter how they do? Doesn't Well, it must not because like you'll look at the ratings and it makes sense. You're like, oh, they're like 26th in the market. Mm -hmm. So it's not like that, you know, the station that they replaced did better than they are. Yeah. So they're clearly not concerned about selling advertising or you know they're asking people to give them donations and it works it's a sweet business model yeah. why don't we do that here why don't we <laughs> because we're not trying to scam people scam this is not a non-profit this is a wait for-profit a wait a enterprise minute. are you saying that churches are trying to sell eternal happiness as a scam I'm not saying anything I'm saying that these radio stations aren't <laughs> worried about keeping the lights on because they have to pay taxes man <laughs> That'd be so sweet. I need to incorporate as a church. To not pay taxes? Church mm-hmm. of Bill. Yeah. Church of Bill and your services are actually comedy shows. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I can never figure out, you it's know. A spiritual moment. Sure. Anytime somebody says, I'm going to start my own church, you know, people laugh and they go, oh, it's illegal. There's all, I'm like, but there's such a proliferation of between real churches and fake ones. Plenty of people have figured out how to incorporate as some religious entity. So what's to keep you from doing it? I don't know. I'm going to figure out what it is and then find that loophole because, boy, taxes, right? Yeah. <laughs> the taxes, church, am I right? The, ch- the church I of I'm Billion. I'm paying for these goddamn roads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have kids in your school. What do I care? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But WAAF in Boston was anytime you were in Boston, if you liked rock and roll, you would turn them on. And uh, now they are gone. Kayla. They are gone as the wind carries them away, right? Mm-hmm. Carries them through what the air. What does K stand for? I don't know. Christian with a K? Christian with a K. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I mean, the format itself has been around for a while. It probably began somewhere as local call letters. It probably started as KLVE on the West Coast, you know. Yeah, that's true. But it's, boy, 
the biblical passages of the locust could not apply more <laughs> than to what's going on with these once phenomenal stations getting bought by this Jesus company. Very strange to me. Very strange. Hey, Adam Carolla. Yeah. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Did I get you at a bad time? No. <laughs> oh my Somebody texted me and said, hey, when you talk to Adam, ask him about the beat bracelet. I don't know what that means. Oh, God. it's an invention of mine. Um, I was, I like beats. Yeah, me too. And, uh, and uh, I oftentimes will order a, a beet salad. And when I order a beet salad, sometime for dinner, the following morning, I uh, go to uh, do my uh, business on the toilet, and I look down, and momentarily I freak out because I think I have internal bleeding. This is the exact, that must be why that person texted me, this is the exact precise scenario I was just describing for myself. There's that two seconds where you freak out, and in your mind, you're already making a phone call to your doctor. Yeah, you're like, oh my God, I have full blown colon cancer. I'm dying. <laughs> you know, quick the right. kids home from school. Let me hug them one last time. Yeah. Right? And then at some point, you start thinking about it, and you go, oh yeah, last night I had a beet salad. And all I'm saying is, is you know those like Lance Armstrong Live Strong bracelets? Yep. When when you order Beats, you get a purple bracelet. Like, and we call it Beats by Ace because I get credit for it. Yeah. But you get a Beat bracelet, and then of course when you're sitting on the pot and you think you're dying, you just look down at your Beats bracelet and you go, Oh yeah, of course, mm -hmm. of course. Or you can work ahead, and, and not also it'd be. It'd be fun if you ran into other people with their beat bracelet on, too. You'd be like, oh, yeah, beat salad. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> right. And everybody would just kind of have that calm look on their face because they knew they had nothing to worry about. That's right. But what if, here's the flip side, though. What if that beat bracelet lulled you into a false sense of security and you had so many beet salads that you it didn't even occur to you that there might be something wrong with your colon and then there was something wrong and the beets had masked it the whole time? Well, that's obviously something we're going to have to address. <laughs> um, it's a serious issue. Yeah. Involving the beat bracelet. I certainly don't want that. I mean, I, I think the beat bracelet is an ingenious idea. I certainly don't want you being blamed for people's unchecked colons, though. No, you're right. This could be a lot like in the Steve Martin movie, The Jerk, where he had, like, the Occu-Grab thing for the glasses, but everyone went cross-eyed because of it. Yeah. Like, there could be some real-world unintended consequences with the beat bracelet. I'm gonna, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to give it some consideration. Well, when you do your focus groups, I'm sure that'll all get ironed out. It's all going to get tested. It's going to get a your you know underwriter's laboratory uh, you know rating and everything like that. It's going to be above the board. We're not importing these bracelets in from China. Okay? Good, yeah, fantastic, mm -hmm. good. Adam Carolla is doing one night at Hilarities. He's doing a six o'clock show and an eight thirty show on Thursday night. I need you to clarify it for me though, because you am I correct that you're walking into these unprepared? No, it's called unprepared, but I, I do. I'll probably do 40 minutes of prepared stand-up okay. at the top of the show. And then the second half of the show, we'll pull ping-pong balls out of a hopper, stuff people wrote down on a ping-pong ball, and I will be unprepared I for see. that. Okay. Oh, that's fun. That's really fun. I'm going to be there with you on Thursday, Adam. It's going to be a good time. Oh, good, yeah. Whatever, whatever the audience writes down, whatever the one word the audience writes down on the ping-pong ball, that's the bit I do. So there's no cheating. It's all up front. And come up there, fill out a, you know, write a name, write a, a title, a word on a ball, and uh, we'll see if I get to it. So it's going to be 40 minutes of Adam, 20 minutes of balls. Love it. Fantastic. Yeah, it should, be, should be a half hour of balls. <laughs> <laughs> half hour of balls. Yeah, give or take. Six o'clock, and that's an early show, my friend. Yeah, I guess on Thursday they don't do a late show. They do it's early and an like a, a medium and an early show. I okay, guess the, I gotcha. You know, Week night or something. 
if it's a Friday or Saturday, it'll be like 8 o'clock, 10.30. Now, let me ask you this. Do people have to provide their own ping pong ball, or will you have them there? What if somebody brings their own pre-inscribed ping pong ball? Uh, I I feel like that would uh, there's no sanctioning body for this. <laughs> but, uh, I would assume that would pass muster, as long as it's one word and it's on a ping pong ball and we can pull it. Sure. Uh, then, then so be it. But you know, we do show up with blank ping pong balls, and before the show, everyone gets sharpies and ping pong balls. We hand them out and collect them right before the show, and then okay. we start. So I, I just want to put people's minds at rest. There's no reason to prepare uh, ping pong ball wise. They don't have to improvise on their own. They'll be there for you at the Adam Carolla show. That's correct. But you know, if we start a trend where you bring your own in. That we wouldn't have to schlep them from uh, Glendale, California. Yeah, understood. Right. Yeah. Um, Adam Carolla is doing two shows this Thursday. It's one night at Hilarities on 4th Street, 6 o'clock and 8.30 with Mary Santora. Yes. Yes, sir. With Mary Santora. You can go to pickwickandfrolic.com uh, for all the details. And um, good luck, Adam. I'll, I'll let you go, brother. Mary, you want to pull the ping pong balls? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I've been waiting for you to ask me that question my whole life. <laughs> and there it is. We, we, always, uh, we always get somebody to come out and do it. I got you. Uh, all right, we'll see you Thursday night. All right, thanks, Adam. There's uh, Adam Carolla, Thursday night with Mary Santora. Mm-hmm. You're burying the lead there, kid. Do you have a like a magician's assistant outfit during you can you do a quick costume change and probably. then to pull the balls out what do they wear like like, like probably like a little uh, sequins. tutu some yeah. sequins oh, tutus yeah and sequins. maybe a feather yeah. hair, headdress oh, it's like an old cheerleading uniform i have i have some fuzzy like house socks fuzzy house socks you think that'll do it sexy mm. I think oh, that'll sexy. do it. Fuzzy house socks only if a, they have holes in them and a kiss the cook apron with nothing underneath <laughs> how does that sound uh, you should save that for Final Friday. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Kiss the cook. Okay, so pickwickandfrolic.com, Adam Carolla, 21 and over, 6 o'clock and 8.30, Thursday only. Look into that there. Uh, let me break. I'm going to have those Stones tickets for you, as promised, around 4.20. Rolling Stones, no filter tour at First Energy Stadium on June 19th, and I will put you there coming up. 35192 if you want to text or alancockshow.com for everything else. It's the Alan Cox Show.